Okay, good evening and welcome to Meaningful Monday. Here we are at the beginning of August. Wow, can you believe how quickly this year is moving? So for all the new people, very warm welcome. And to those who come back, well, welcome back. So just to let you know and remind you, Meaningful Monday is just a free webinar on the first Monday of every month to help raise awareness, to help people just live a better life and actually create a better world. And I say create a better world because if you improve your life, you'll improve it for those around you, where you are at home, at work, with your friends, your colleagues, and so on. So that's the purpose of doing this. So I'll tell you um, how I came up with this topic and, and why. I had a coaching client um, for a long time now. It's actually been um, more than a year, maybe more than two years, in fact. And through the process with the coaching client there, there was a certain behavior or certain action that was working against him. And he actually knew what action he wanted to take and what behavior he wanted to take to help him get the results he wanted. But he just never seemed to be able to stick to it. And as a result, you know, he was losing more than he was gaining as time was going on. And as much as I'd been coaching for many years, I felt that I just couldn't there was something that I couldn't do to get this change in behavior. And even though I'm not responsible for anyone's actions and coaching definitely is that where the person, you know, creates their own agenda. I still found, felt accountable to a degree as the coach, not being able to find a transformational breakthrough for the person. So, you know, as the law of attraction works, you really want something, you'll attract it into your life. I never looked anything up. I never searched on the internet. I didn't do a thing, but within about, a week or two of having that thought, how can I help him in a different way? I got a phone call one day at my office, someone offering for me to join this rapid results coaching course. So I did the course and I have to say that it was quite phenomenal. It's called rapid results coaching. So you can use a technique just once um, or for the person, even a once off drop in client kind of thing. Or you can use it in an ongoing long-term coaching relationship, not all the time. You don't use a tool on someone all the time. But if there's a need, there's a whole toolbox there of 14 different uh, techniques. And shadow values is one of those techniques. And I have to say that shadow values is really one of my favorite things to work with people just because of the profound shifts that occur um, when using this technique. It really is what I call, you know, transformational and the reason is, um, I'll explain shadow values as we go along and you might initially find them a bit weird, but as the more I talk you through it, the easier it will become to understand. Underneath anything that anyone does is some unconscious driver. People don't just do things because they do things. There's a driver underneath and it's subconscious and it's driving a person's behavior. And when we can uncover that thing, then we see miracles occur in people's lives because when we know what that is, we can link it to the action they want to take or the goal they want to achieve. And once you've done that linking, which is called values linking, and done it enough to create a strong neuro pathway, you really do see miracles occur. And shadow values is a fully conscious exercise. The person's not in meditation. They're not in a deep level of mind or anything. They're fully conscious exercise. And um, it's so powerful, it can literally transform a person's life in just one session. So once I got this, I did apply it with my client. And just to tell you the results with this example, he hadn't taken the right behavior for months. And I mean, in every week, he would take some right and then so many wrong that he would land worse off than he was. And a few right and some wrong and, and so on. And then after doing shadow values and linking to what he wanted to do, um, he hadn't broken his um, pattern of good action for, I think it's 10 consecutive weeks. So we're not further than that at the moment, but that's the result that I've achieved so far. So um, that's what it is. There it is, the Rapid Results Coaching Certification. And as I said, why we do anything is to create a better world. If I can help someone like him, he'll be better off in his own personal life and he'll be better for those in his family and around him. Okay, so what is shadow values? So shadow values is really discovering the hidden power within. If you look at that kitten, that could be you or I, and the shadow, the part that we don't show the world, 
And I'll tell you why we don't show the world. Um, we don't show it because it's hidden under a layer of, listen to the words, shame and guilt. So it's what I would call untransmuted grandiosity or your untransmuted power or your unexpressed full, fuller potential or this grander version of you that you don't express and you keep suppressed or hidden or, you know, unexpressed because of shame and guilt. So if you also look at this image here, that woman over there looks just, you know, keeping to herself ordinary behavior, but there really is a powerful, you know, superhero there. But this superhero can't come out, can't be expressed, can't add value to the world because as I said, there's, there's a reason it's suppressed under shame and guilt. So it really comes from how we were conditioned. Just to give an example, um, kids, they love to um, get a lot of attention, let's say. Now, when a child is very small and they're an infant, of course they're going to cry and they'll get the attention and they'll get the attention ongoing until they become a toddler. Then at some point it becomes a bit inappropriate that adults are then talking and the child wants this constant stream of attention and then gets told, excuse me, the adults are talking, can you go and play with your toys? And now they're not getting that need met of attention, so they'll do some other things. They'll be naughty or whatever it is. All they want is attention. So if they don't get it in an empowering way, they'll get it in a disempowering way and be naughty or do something. But they kept getting told, you can't have all the attention. It's not your turn now. We're doing some adult thing now, whatever it is. So that's an example of that need becomes a shadow value. And if it's met in a positive way, the person could be, for example, a musician or a singer. And they're getting that attention. But if they're not, they could be a really annoying kind of person in your life. So let me help share this um, with you. Um, did you have a question, John? I see that your, your hand is up. Yeah, I'm just wondering, could this be like something in your subconscious? Um, like a subconscious asset? Like, like what you yes, said Yes, it's, 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 an, it's an unconscious driver of behavior. Yes. Okay, so like what you said before about... Um, it could be shame or guilt that you might have in, in your subconscious. You don't no, 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 it's not, no, no, no. Shadow value is not shame or guilt. Shadow value is a powerful attribute and a value that you have that is suppressed or hidden under a layer of shame and guilt. So you don't express mm -hmm. value because of shame and guilt. But it, shadow value is not shame and it's not guilt. It's other things like attention would be shadow value. Okay. Let, that, no, I see that as an example. I, I get what you're saying. Good. Okay. Um, thanks. Thank you. All right. So let me just give you this example. It might be um, easy for you to understand through the story. So my coach um, who coached me, he he met this woman. Um, this is one of, one of his clients. There was this woman who fell out of a four-story building, and she broke every bone in her body except her spine and her skull. And after about eight months, she healed the bones, but she was in such terrible pain that this woman could hardly walk. So she heard about him as a coach and, you know, wanted to have a session. And her purpose for the coaching session was she wanted to heal and get rid of the pain. Now, as they were talking, he wasn't sure what technique he was going to use with her. They first, you know, had this kind of discussion. And he just said to her um, something along the lines of, you know, is there anything that you haven't been able to do? since your injury and she said yes sleep with married men so as much as it was a joke he said thank you very much for your honesty and felt that she was actually it was quite nice that she was being so open and after talking it, it came out that she actually spent many many years in her past sleeping with married men so and not here to judge because when people do not get their needs met positively they will get their needs met negatively so I'm not here to judge the action. That coach wasn't there to judge the action. He was just there to help her get the outcome that she wanted from the coaching session. So what he did was he asked her, what do you get from that? That action of sleeping with married men, what do you get? What is the, what we call secondary gain? So in other words, when you're doing that action of sleeping with married men, what do you gain from it? What feeling do you get? Because that's the shadow value. So what feeling do you get deep down that you'll never admit to anyone? So just make sure that we agree there's no shame, no guilt, no judgment, no fear here. 
be completely authentic and totally honest. I'm not judging you. Just tell me what is the feeling that you get. And then she, you know, she said something and he said, look, no shame, no guilt. If you were the most egocentric person on the planet, what do you get from that action? And then she said, when I'm sitting on top of a married man, I know I own that person. And with one phone call, I can destroy his whole life. I get total control and total superiority. So in that example, she was just following the rules of eliciting a shadow value and agreeing upfront, no shame, no guilt, no fear, no judgment. And she did it. And this is what came out. They obviously had very good rapport. So he said to her, to recap, when you're sleeping with married men, you have total control, total superiority, total authority. And she said, yes. So then you asked her this question. If you got rid of all the pain in your body, would it give you more or less control and superiority than sleeping with married men? So she took about 10 seconds to contemplate that question. Suddenly her eyes lit up and she realized that if she got rid of the pain, <laughs> she'd be one of a handful of people on the planet who's fallen off a four story building, not only heal themselves in their body, but also completely heal themselves of pain. And in that moment, she saw it straight away, instant meeting of a need of control and superiority. So once she elicited that, and she found something of higher value and higher fulfillment, he then said to her, here we go, take this pen and paper and write down this question and answer this question a hundred times for me. How many ways will healing myself completely and removing all the pain from my body completely give me more control and superiority? So she did what he said. She started to go ahead. When she got to about 37, she said, I'm done. I said, no, you're not done. You need to go to 100. She goes, no, I'm done. All the pain has just left my body. So can you just see how powerful this is? He was in total shock. Couldn't believe that it happened so quickly. But the next thing she got up and she walked without pain before she was like, you know, wincing and um, limping or whatever. She got up and she literally walked. And um, this is just to show you how powerful the brain is because once the brain realized that, you know, going around with all this pain gives you less of what you really want, which is control and gives you less of what you really want, which is superiority. Then the brain says, get rid of the pain because I'm getting less control, having this pain, not more, less. I'm having less superiority than having this pain. So get rid of it. And then when she got up and walked, she was back to her old self again to walk, you know, and swing her hips like that. So when it says their shadow values work is remarkable, it's mind bending remarkable. And if we can understand how to work with it, it's one of the most powerfully transforming techniques ever. So once we get our needs met in a more fulfilling and positive way, you will just stop the old behavior. You won't have to worry about it, it will just stop. And the proof of this is that uh, my coach has used shadow values with the most difficult people to transform, which I think are the most difficult, are heroin addicts. And it's this technique that is the most powerful thing for getting people off drugs um, is shadow values. All they've got to do is find something that's more valuable and fulfilling to them and link it to what is the shadow value that they get from taking the drugs. So whenever you do anything, anything, you get something from it, some feeling from it. And in psychology, this thing is called the secondary gain. So for example, if let me just let someone in the waiting room. Um, for example, smoking, if you said, well, what do you get from smoking? People aren't going to tell you about the inhaling kind of thing. They'll tell you, well, when I go for a smoke, my other smoke buddies go with and it's connection. Connections, everything. Some people say that the only reason that they ever smoked was to rebel against their parents. Well, that's the secondary gain, rebelliousness. So there's always something underlying our behavior that's driving us, that's driving our behavior. So if you think about any action, 
whatever it is, let's say with that woman um, sleeping with married men, that's the action. The feeling she got was control or superiority. Now, if it's expressed in a negative way, that's called the shadow value. But the minute she linked it to something that was more valuable to her, healing a whole body and then becoming a public speaker about it, helping other people with that, um, you know, sharing with people the hope and the brighter future that you can too can heal your body. That's the same value, but it's a golden value now. It becomes something that you can share and educate and add value to people with. So that's how it works with the action, creates a feeling, and we either express it through negative behavior, then it's a shadow value, or through positive behavior, it's a golden value. So the shadow value is always kind of narcissistic or egocentric or a very selfish kind of need met. If it's the golden value, it's that loving and that kind and that light, fluffy feeling, if that makes sense. So here's another story of a woman um, who hadn't, who had been single for 25 years and she went to see the coach and she said, you know, she wants to know why has she been single for 25 years? She wants a relationship. So the mind says, I want to be in a relationship, but she could just never land up in a relationship. So the coach asked, well, you know, when last have you been on a date? And she said, 13 years ago, 13 years ago. I said, okay, tell me what happened on your last date that you had. She says, well, we went out for dinner. This man was very nice. Everything was going really well. Everything was fine. Then the waiter brought the menus, which was fine. Then he brought the wine list. Then the man picked up the wine list and as he picked up the wine and started going through it, she said, in that moment, I knew this will never work. I just got up and I said to him, this will never work. And I just left. So then he went through the process with her and he said, look, let's agree. There's no shame, no guilt, no fear, no judgment. Do you agree? She said, yes. Took it through the process of how we elicit the shadow value. And when it came to the, to the party, he said, What's the feeling that you were not getting in that moment when you realized that you wouldn't work and you left? What is the feeling you were getting? And she said, not being respected. She says, I'm also a wine connoisseur. I've been, you know, I'm, I've got a great wine palette. He didn't even ask me. He was just going to order the wine. So it was just that lack of respect for me and what I would like to drink. And then he said, okay, if you were the most egocentric person on the planet and just no shame, no guilt, what is... What is the naughty feeling that you that you actually get there? And then she said, control. Okay. So then he made a joke and said, um, you know, would your friends classify you as a bit of a control freak? And she went, yeah, actually, maybe they would. And what do you do for work? Well, she was an IT controller for the government department. So there you can see how that is definitely her shadow value. So then he said to her, tell me, do you think that being in a relationship will give you more or less control. And she thought about it and she said, less. And he said, well, do you realize now why you're single? So you understand that. So then her mind says, if I can show it to you like this, her mind says, I want a boyfriend, but the brain, the subconscious mind says, you're going to get less of what you love. And what you love is control. That's your shadow value. That's what you absolutely love. So wanting a boyfriend is the conscious mind saying that, but at a deep subconscious level, you know that you're going to have less control. And this is the thing that's driving your behavior, the thing that you absolutely love. So you're not going to go on a date. That's how it actually works. So then he said to her this, please don't judge the question. Just go with the question and agree just to let's work together. Just cooperate. Don't ask the question. It's desired just to get you the result that you want. So please answer this question for yourself. How many ways will having a boyfriend give you someone else to control? <laughs> so she said, I can't answer that question. She so said, <laughs> yes, you can. And she went, yeah, of course I can. She said, I can tell him what to wear. I can tell him what to eat. I can tell him what to, I can end, end, end. And she went off and suddenly she would have the beaming smile from ear to ear. And as a result of getting that in her head, that she could actually have more control and control more things around in her life, having a boyfriend and not having one, it transformed. Two weeks later, the woman's in relationship. So she hadn't 
been in a relationship for 25 years and within two weeks of doing the process, she was back in relationship. Um, I don't know where she is today. I know that she was involved with that same person for um, eight months, then they broke up. But the fact is she's back in the game and she's dating again. And the other thing that's important is she's not controlling people anymore. She's not, she doesn't have a controlling personality because once you own your shadow, you become a balanced person. You become a fully authentic and whole person. So you don't need to throw your shadow onto people anymore to try and get this suppressed need that's under shame and guilt met in a strange way. Once you own it and you know what it is, you can get it met in a healthy way. So how we work with clients is this. We take the action that they're doing that they, that's not helping them. So let's say a person is a, a binge eater and they're overweight. Their expressed desire or goal is to reduce weight, stop the binge eating, and the new action would be um, maybe eating healthy and exercising. So right now, the action they're taking of binge eating does give them some feeling. And whatever that feeling is, is their shadow, their shadow value. So once we elicit their shadow value, we take the new action and we find a way to link it to this feeling in such a way that it gives them more of their shadow value than the old action. So the new action gets more of that feeling and it's an empowered action. And once they found that, they transformed and the thing will never happen again. So if you just look at this chart, it might um, help you understand why the brain shifts so rapidly to create this change. If you have, a dis you have disempowering behavior on one end and you have empowering behavior on the other hand, and then you've got these levels of fulfillment. So let's say a person is smoking, for example. Smoking might be fulfilling three out of 10, but maybe their shadow value is rebelliousness, right? What could be more rebellious than smoking well taking drugs is more rebellious so, so taking drugs is very rebellious you got to do it in sneaky you got to it's illegal you got to do it in a dark corner you got to swap the money no one must know about it you know that you doing breaking the rules that people just cannot break but you are breaking them so you're even more rebellious so that would take you higher up here but if we if there's not a, an empowering action it's a disempowering action we, we look at what could be an empowering action or goal that person may have let's say that would give them more of this feeling. So what would be more rebellious than smoking or taking drugs? Let's say creating a movement. Creating a movement has more rebelliousness. You're getting a whole crowd of people to follow you as a leader, but you're going towards maybe some good cause or something. Well, you go right up the fulfillment ladder. And once you're up there, at maybe say 10 out of 10, well, that shift happens straight away. The brain gets it and you will never take the old action again. You'll only take the old action again if you can't get the thing at a high fulfillment level. Otherwise, you won't take the action again. So let's say a person can't get drugs, they will go back to smoking. So as long as it goes up and they can get it, they will continue, and then they get the thing that they actually want. Now, just that you know how shadow values become each and every one of our part and, par part and parcel of who we are as human beings, because I just wanna add, in case I never said it before, everybody has shadow values everybody on the planet there's no one who doesn't and how come we all have them because they are our strongest neuro pathways we came into this world with what we call myelinated neuro pathways a neuro pathway is a pattern of thought okay it's a pathway in the brain and when you think that or you have that feeling it can even be a feeling in our thought that feeling Every time you have that feeling, it comes from a neuro pathway being fired. And the more you fire it, the more myelin grows over that neuron as a sheath. And once it's got lots of myelin on it, that sheath is very effective in transmitting that signal. So we know that babies, we don't know how or why, where it starts, but babies are born with these myelinated pathways and they come into this world. It's at the very core of a person's DNA. So if you think about babies, do babies like to um, get attention? Yes, they do, and they get attention. Do babies like to be validated? Yes, they like to be that. Do they like to control the room? They do control the room, even toddlers. Toddlers want attention, they want to belong, they want to control, they want to rebel. You say, don't go there, they wanna run there. Don't touch that thing, they wanna touch that thing. 
So there are all those shadow values from infancy in us, and they're driving our behavior. But what happens is as we grow up, we're told you can't have all the attention, so we put on a shame and guilt. You can't control everybody here and control the whole, you know, holiday that you're going on, or you can't you can't get everything you want all of the time. So these get now suppressed under these layers of shame and guilt. But they really are the reason why we all do what we do. So if you just look at toddlers, you can see through their behavior that these things, they are getting met the younger they are. As they grow up, it gets less and less. So the, the clue is, or the, or the um, value is, or the transformation comes when you link a goal or new action that you want, that, you're not, that you don't have now. So let's say it's binge eating and you want to exercise or eat healthy. That's the goal. And the new action is exercising and eating healthy. You just got to link that to the most myelinated part of the body, which is your shadow value. And this thing has got more value to you. So it's got more value for you to be healthy and not binge eat and exercise because you'll get a, a good body and you'll be in better shape, whatever the shadow value is. Once you link it to that and fire many neurons to the coaching session where you, 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 you actually go to over 100, once you go over 100, you've myelinated that neuro pathway and it's fixed, it's done. It can't go back. It will always be there and it's permanent. So to understand it there at the bottom, it says, this pathway or gray matter is strengthened via the myelin or white matter, which is the insulation. And it is transformed from the equivalent of dial-up to broadband. Heavy myelinated neural pathways are up to 300 times faster. They've been optimized for speed and efficiency. So all that means is once we link that and fire that several times and myelinate that pathway, it becomes the dominant pathway. And because it's linked to your highest drive of your shadow value, you will never take that behavior again. This is why I say that it's the most effective tool to get heroin addicts off heroin because the brain is controlling our behavior. Whether and, all the, and most of the time, 95% of the time, at the unconscious level. So transformation is always the discovery of value. So once you find the thing that's more valuable to you that you really want, you just got to link it and transformation happens. So the goal with clients is to get that need met, whatever the shadow value that's elicited is, get that need met positively and more give them more of what they want so what the shadow value whatever it is to give them more of that shadow and get it done um, in a positive way so we take them from wherever they are on this um, particular axis here on this chart let's say they're a three or a five and you elevate them all the way up and you move across from disempowering to empowering with some goal that gives them meaning so as an example um, if a shadow value was attention then a meaningful way would be to, you know, entertain people. Now you're getting attention. You could be a musician, you could be a singer, or you could be in front of an audience as a speaker or a trainer. If it was superiority, well, it would be learning new things. And meaning is none other than the fulfillment of your highest values. Once you're fulfilling your highest values and your known values, then you've got meaning in your life. So that's the goal, just to elevate that, find meaning, and this is the reason why, as I said, many addictions just vanish because they find a higher level of fulfillment. So as an example, controlling everything at home versus leading a team at work, these are very different things, but they could still be under the shadow value of control. I'm going to have a bit of fun with you here just quickly. Let me just open my thing. I want you all to go and find your... Um, what you call it, uh, reaction buttons. And uh, once you've got all your fingers on the reaction button, give me a thumbs up. Get your reaction button on your task bar there. All right, Michelle's got it. So I just want you to all put your thumbs up. Who here loves freedom? Right, you guys are all the control freaks. That's your shadow <laughs> value. Who here loves learning? Put your thumbs up. Love learning? You are the superiority complex people. Why? <laughs> Because if you love learning, you love to be superior to your level of knowledge. Every day you're being driven by that. You know, if there's no shame, no guilt, no fear, no judgment, people will actually admit that. They love learning because they want to have more information, be more knowledgeable. And the shadow value there is something like superiority. 
so the, the 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 bonus or the benefit or the secret or whatever the the beauty of shadow values is once we elicit it and we embrace it no longer with shame and guilt we embrace it and say yes i own this part of me it's not going to be dark in the shadows there i'm actually going to bring it in and own it in a healthy way and in a balanced way well then your life can literally transform so just put it this way let's talk about me so i don't make a joke out of you guys and make a joke out of myself if i didn't like attention i wouldn't be presenting here tonight if i didn't love superiority my courses my programs my coaching would be inferior i'd be boring i'd add no value i'd never study or get more qualifications i'd never try to learn new skills if i didn't like control my courses or workshops would be out of control people would be sitting on the floor things would be out of place nothing would run on time people would be talking to each other making a mess of the room the materials would be a mess the manuals would be all mixed up and untidy the resources would be crappy so do you understand what i mean so if you look at the golden side if my shadow values were attention superiority and control the golden side is it allows me to be of service to you it allows me to educate you it allows me to share my knowledge with you to add value to your life it allows me to show up on time be here for you so do you get the understanding now of how this moves from the one side to the other side so you know when someone says to me janine you're just an attention seeking control freak with a superiority complex i say let's go and have coffee i think we're going to get on just fine <laughs> <laughs> but if i was only that if i was only attention seeking controlling with a superiority complex no one would want to hang out with me i'd be the most awful person on the planet so it's not that we are not these things it's that we are taking these things and transmuting them into higher fulfillment meaningful behaviors whatever they are for us and we leave the negative things behind and once you own your shadow you don't have a need to control people anymore or to be superior with them or to have all the attention you don't have that need because you start to live in a healthy fully healthy and balanced way so the truth is that the pendulum in all of our lives is always swinging shadow golden shadow golden or to say it better narcissistic altruistic narcissistic every single day we are swinging like a pendulum there's some days that you just want your own space you don't want to be with anybody you just want to do your own thing you want to be totally selfish and you need that and the other days where you just want to be of service to others so nothing's wrong with anybody it's just that we need to know that this is for everyone everyone has this and everyone has these needs and we need to just know how to balance them in a more healthy way so um in summary shadow drives people forward those are the shadow values it's the driver the underlying driver of anything that we do and when we uncover the shadow and actually own it and become a balanced and authentic person the whole of us we can get some incredibly profound results um, especially when it comes to action that's holding you back so generally with shadow values you have one action that's holding you back like let's say binge eating and another action that you want that you can't stick to like maybe going to exercise or eating healthy you want it you want it you want it but you find you struggle to stick to it so you've got these two actions one working against you one that you want but you can't get this thing unlocks it literally just like that so the transformation is eliciting someone's shadow linking it to the to the goal or desired level or the desired result elevating the fulfillment and once you've done that you just link the neuro pathway over a hundred times and it's done and i can tell you it's the absolute most powerful form of values and conflict and transformational work um, that i've ever done and ever used myself so i'm going to do something that's a little bit out there now just a little bit uh just a little bit out there let's say and something that you can maybe chew on so it says they describe god if you speak to any person who's got some religious faith or belief in any way shape or form which the majority of people on planet earth do have and you ask them to describe god god to you just describe god and uh, you ask these questions does god like attention and say yes is God the authority? The answer would be yes. Does God 
want you to belong. Yes. Does God like control and decide what to do, like set the rules, the parameters on how you meant to live your life? For example, the, com the commandments, the answer would be yes. Can God make or break the rules anytime? In other words, not submit or obey to any other authority? The answer would be yes. Is God meant to be the most superior thing inside your mind at any given time? The answer would be yes. And so you do because you constantly pray to validate that. So, this is where it's really going to cook your brain. Could it possibly be that all God is, is the disowned part of you? Ooh. 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 Nice. I'll, say that, I'll say that again. Could it possibly be that all God is, is the disowned part of you? So just to make this a little bit more relatable there was this man who went to speak to this yogi and he questioned the yogi and he said to the yogi what's the difference between me and you we're both human beings but what's the real difference between us and the yogi had the most incredible response the yogi said you believe in god i know i'm god mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's not saying that in a blasphemous way. Please understand. This is saying it in the way that Wayne Dyer talks about it in um, his one mm -hmm. book called um, Wishes Fulfilled, when he says that, you know, if God is the ocean or source energy is the ocean, each and every one of us is a drop of that ocean or a wave in that ocean. We're always connected. You can't be separate from it. And your qualities of creation are the same as the creator himself or herself. So you're literally a physical extension of God. And to know that that God is within, not without, you're not separate, God is in. That's where all your power lies because people always say, once you find your complete oneness, oneness with yourself and oneness with God, then you become the most powerful version of who you are. So I thought I'd just end on that so you can really understand shadow values is not a negative thing at all. It's a very important thing to uncover. And this is what I do um, in coaching. So as I said, the rapid results coaching thing, there's 14 different techniques in that track. It's called a track. You can do the whole track. You can just do one of them, whatever. It depends on the situation. I just want to talk about these three um, just that you're aware. If any of you want to or you know anyone who needs these things. When it comes to shadow values, Shadow values works for actions, actions that you don't want to take, like addictions or negative behavior or like that woman sleeping with married men, whatever it is. It's actions and um, they're not getting you to where you want to get. And there's another action that would get you to where you want to go, but, it's, but you're not taking it and it's preventing you. The universal freedom technique is best for trapped emotions or limiting beliefs or something holding you back but you don't know what it is. If you ever have that feeling, something's mm. holding me back here, mm. but I don't know what it is, mm. that would be um, the universal freedom technique. In soul retrieval is best for specific events or um, like traumatic events in your life, some situation where you're either alone or with someone else um, present and this has caused some block in your life. It's been like trauma. So... I just want to ask if you don't mind, if Nancy doesn't mind talking here. When I first got the certification in April, I did a couple of sessions to just practice and I asked Nancy, would you like to be my, excuse the word, guinea pig, but guinea pigs are really cute. So Nancy, I'm just saying that's really cute now. Um, do, do you want to share with us, because you did a, a couple of sessions with me, how, how you benefited from it if you did. If you didn't, you can also tell the truth and say so. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Janine. Um, yeah, I, uh, I did the Universal Freedom Technique. That was the first one that I did with Janine. Um, for something that I felt was blocking me, I was not getting the desired results that I wanted in some areas in my life. And I had a feeling, so I think it's for me, you've got to be aware that there's something going on and you've tried everything. Um, for me, I mean, I do personal development, I'm a coach. I knew that there was something not moving in my life. There was definitely a block. So I did the, the technique and I'd say halfway through the technique, I actually felt something different. I felt that I had shifted in a way um, and I already kind of felt I got the benefits of, 
of the technique just halfway through it. So by the end of it, I instantly was elevated. It was like almost like I had gone to a different level and I felt the shift. Coming out of it, I thought, this is fantastic. I immediately got results. And then the next day I do remember saying to Janine that I, I felt I felt that something had shifted in my life and I could see that I was going to get, you know, get some results. I could feel that there was some, there was a difference. Uh, going forward now, that was probably about four months ago, five months ago, I've definitely felt different. So I've, I've gotten some results that I didn't have prior. So I can definitely say that I, I was quite happy with um, that technique. And then you also also did, um, you also did a soul retrieval, Nance, with um, a specific event in your life that was yeah, I've done two of those. Yeah, so I I did two of the soul retrievals um, for trauma, uh, two events in my life. And I'd say that um, I felt, for me, the soul retrieval was amazing. (laughs) I, I had been suffering from this trauma for about 25 years, maybe even a bit longer. And again, halfway through the technique, I felt the shift. Um, I guess the best way to describe it is I could feel my heart open. I, I actually felt so much lighter. I felt like um, there was a lot of love. I felt very safe. Um, and I felt going forward that I was confident that um, I could put the trauma behind me. And in actual fact, before I left the actual session I had put the trauma behind me um I I really have no other words to describe it other than really opens your heart and I changed because I had changed in that way my relationship um with certain people in my life changed and it wasn't a massive change I didn't do anything different I just my energy was different and therefore the other people around me felt it and, and they changed with that energy as well so I instantly had massive results from that. I actually was a lot happier. I remember um, the, the next day or walking out of out of the session, I actually had like a bounce. I felt really, really energetically, really happy. Um, and yeah, I, I can't, those two with the soul retrieval, I mean, really changed my life. So yeah, you I, haven't done shadow value, so you can't comment on that one. <laughs> yeah, I haven't done, that's next. But um, yeah, soul retrieval was, it was quite amazing. So it was universal freedom technique, but I must say for me, the soul retrieval um, really shifted and, and changed my energy dramatically. Yeah, thanks. So just to let you know, the brain is very, very powerful. And if we just give it the right environment and the right um, process, it can do amazing things. Just to share something interesting so you know this for yourself, it might be valuable. Um, people have sometimes have trauma at certain weight levels in their life and they never go back to that weight level again because if they get close to that weight level, it actually reenacts the trauma. So wow. let's say a person was beaten or severely hurt at 60 kilograms, and that was the ideal weight. They'll never go back to 60 kilograms again. They put on weight, they'll never go back there because the hind brain says, I won't need to go back to being 60 kilos. Are you crazy? It believes that 60 kilograms mm. equals hurt or a beating. Or for example, if you mm. ever cheated on your partner and you weighed 60, and now that result of cheating on your partner made you full of shame and guilt about it, you'll never go back to that weight again because the hind brain believes 60 kilograms caused you to cheat and that caused severe shame and severe guilt and doesn't want that. So in that example, you need to do soul retrieval and then shadow values to, to clean it up because you need to, soul retrieval means you lose part of yourself. Um, you actually lose it. Like it's called like a shattered soul almost and parts of you shatter off. And every time you heal that trauma, you bring it back in and you include it back into you and integrate it again. So that's soul retrieval. Mm. Another example, um, binge eating with exercise and being healthy. Um, as I said to you, um, if binge eating is low fulfillment and exercising is high fulfillment, once you know that and link it to your shadow value, you'll never go back to the wrong, wrong behavior again. Mm. So the only reason people did anything that they ever do is for the secondary gain, whatever it may be. So just mapping that helps to fire those neurons, build the myelin. Once you map, why would you do this? Um, so how will this give you significantly more of your shadow value if you do it? And how would 
doing the old behavior give you significantly less of your shadow value and you just answer that question over a hundred times and the myelin is built and the neural pathways are there um the brain's very powerful it won't go back so this can be used for anything procrastination not working on your business when you want to not getting a book written that you've always wanted to write um scattered thinking even mental action that's um that's wrong so i hope that's been helpful um, if you just think about some of the shadow values that I, I mentioned, or some of the jokes that I made about, you know, do you love learning or do you love freedom, things like that. Once we know and own the shadow part of ourselves, we really do become whole and complete. And when we embrace that and become more balanced, the pendulum's not swinging too far left and right, we can take a lot of action into a very fulfilling and empowering way. And that's how where our greatness lies. So, you know, some people are more afraid of their power than they are afraid of their fears. And um, it's really uncovering that power, like that poem of Mary Ann Williamson about let your light shine. All right, people, um, that's the lesson for tonight. Just to tell you some of the upcoming, or any questions or um, feedback or any questions from anyone before I go on. We're just going to wrap up and then do a meditation. I'd say I've got one, Janine. Pardon? I've got one, Janine. Um, I think I understand how you're talking about the shadow values, but we didn't actually go through the universal freedom technique or soul retrieval, have we? What do no, you about no. That? yes, because tonight, John, I just focused on shadow values. I'm just sharing from the rapid results coaching that sometimes two things need to be combined. I'm just sharing three techniques. There's 14 in this um, thing that I've done, but just sharing because some people don't know what's holding them back. Just me, for example, that client that I had, I'm so blessed. I really am so blessed that I had a coaching client who was so stuck that after session after session, his way forward every time he left was, I'm going to do A, B, or C. Next week we'd catch up. Did you do it? No. What did you do? I did what I didn't mean to do. We got, and eventually I was like, I've, I, I'm doing something wrong or I'm not doing something right. I don't know what it was. And I was blessed that that happened, that this came into my experience because I can just help people so much better now with this and including myself. So I can actually coach myself and so can anyone else. If you do coaching with a coach, like I'm continuously helping my coaching clients coach themselves. And that's what you really want um, is to learn how to coach yourselves. So I'm just mentioning the shadow values because that's tonight's theme, John. So I'm not going through the universal freedom technique or solitude. Well, they're much more, um, they longer take much longer to explain than just two minutes. Will we have an opportunity to go through down the track? Because I like um, I'm loving the shadow value thing. Well, in short, the universal freedom technique, um, you know, is a. It's got to have a block that's a higher than seven out of ten. Soul retrieval's got to have a trauma or negative experience that's higher than a seven out of ten. If they're higher than a seven out of ten, the technique will work. If anything's less than that. You don't need to do it. You can just have a normal coaching session. The person can work on it, but it's when they're higher. So I can't mm -hmm. really explain mm -hmm. it um, in two seconds. It's more like a, a conversation mm -hmm. that we have. Um, some eyes closed, some eyes open, just depending, but they at a normal conscious level. So bottom line, where, where can I get more information on that? Because you've got me intrigued. I really like that. Yeah. <laughs> you can have a coaching session with me, John. Oh, okay, cool. I like that. Um, I don't actually know this information isn't out there and shadow values is only is a registered trademark. So shadow selves is on the internet, but not shadow values, shadow selves on the, on the internet. All right. Um, so next meaningful Monday, we'll talk about two ways to release negativity immediately. Like if you had negativity show up and you want to release it straight away and immediately and it will work. I'm going to share with you two, um, interesting ways that I've, um, that I'd like to share with you. And I practice myself and it does work. Then just for the next upcoming events, um, if anybody wants to know more about the Silver Method, which is a four-day dynamic meditation program, then the four key skills to empower you is the free webinar where I just do give some tips and techniques to help you in that. Um, and also you'll get to know more about the Silver Method. <clears throat> so that's at the end of August, the 24th. Then the next Silver Method class for anyone who wants to attend is in September. It's a four-day immersion from the 9th to the 12th. And also to let you know, the next mastermind coming up is Put Your Dream to the Test, which is a John Maxwell book. And um, 
I'm part of the John Maxwell team, so certified John Maxwell speaker training coach, so is Nancy. And this Put Your Dream to the Test is actually a mastermind which has got a dream map. Um, I'm not going to pretend that it doesn't, that it's for everyone, it's not. It's It does require some work. When I say work, I don't mean you're going to write a thesis, but I mean you do need to be very honest and authentic and do the homework to get the value out of it. If you really have a dream that you want to accomplish and you don't know how on earth to do it or if they ever will, because half the people in this world don't achieve their dreams, and out of that half, only 13% actually do it because others try and it gets too difficult and they give up, then this is really the mastermind to to do. As long as you know yourself, you're committed to taking the action at the end of each week and answering questions for your own benefit to come to know yourself. You don't have to answer to the group, but just for yourself that you do the work. If you do the work, you'll get the most phenomenal results and you will achieve your dream. So that's the mastermind. And there is an early bird prize that ends in a few days time, a week away. Okay, guys, that's it from me. Um, we're going to do a guided meditation now. So for anyone who's new, just grab a pen and paper because we do ask you some questions in a deep meditative state that you are going to answer for yourself. And the beauty of that is those answers will be different to if I asked them to you at a conscious level because when you're at a deep level of mind, which you'll get in the meditation, your intuition will be the part of you that's going to actually answer the questions for your benefit. Yeah, just, just one quick question about the silver method, um, four-day silver method happening in September. Is that going to be a face-to-face -face classroom environment or is it online? Yeah, face-to-face. -face. Awesome. Hopefully we'll be out of lockdown then. Oh, sweet. I hope so too. Cool. I th yeah. Thank you. All right. Um, to just find a place to relax, hold on. I've got some things in the chat box. Amazing and insightful. Thank you very much, Vanessa. Oh, no, let's go to the top. Thank you, Claire. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Vanessa. Got me thinking. Thank you. So, Hannah, if I pronounced that correctly, thank you very much. Thank you guys for joining. All right. Um, if this is new for anyone, I'm just going to. Um, do a fractional relax from head to toe. Then you're going to imagine a waterfall of light, just cleansing your energy field and turning to unconditional love in, in a green light. And then once you've done that, I'm going to just ask you three simple questions at the end about your intention for the month ahead, what do you want to focus on and um, what do you need to act on or release. Don't worry about the questions now. When I ask them to you at the end, all I want you to do is not analyze anything. Just write down your first impressions and they'll be the truth and the correct answers for you. Okay. Just relax, find yourself a comfortable position, close your eyes, take a nice deep breath and as you exhale, just allow the tensions in your body to release and float away. Take another deep breath in. And as you exhale, feel your body relaxing. Feel the tension leaving your scalp. Relax your scalp. Relax your forehead. Relax your eyes. Relax your cheeks, relax your tongue and jaw, just relax your whole face.
relax your neck keep breathing deeply and slowly and rhythmically take a nice breath in and as you exhale just relax your shoulders arms and hands Feel the tension leaving your back from the top of your neck to the end of your spine. Take another deep breath in and as you exhale, relax your chest. Take another nice deep belly breath in and as you exhale, relax your abdomen. Relax your hips and pelvic area. Relax your thighs. Relax your knees. Relax your calves. Relax your feet all the way down to your toes. You are now experiencing a deep state of relaxation. Now you're going to create in your mind an ideal place of relaxation. It can be real or imagined, somewhere that you've been or maybe somewhere that you'd like to go and allow it to be a place where you feel totally relaxed. Begin to experience this place right now. Now that you've created your ideal place of relaxation, you're going to add a waterfall of white light into the scene. Place it wherever you choose. The waterfall is gentle, allowing you to stand under the cascading white light. The light is a healing energy, a clearing energy. Your waterfall of light is now created. Walk over to the waterfall and stand under this white healing light. Allow the white light to swirl around you, encompassing you within its glow. It is clearing all the stress, the tension and the clutter away. Not just of today or the past week or even the past month or year. It's clearing the stress, tension and clutter of your lifetime from your energy field, from your atmosphere or your aura. Just feel this light clearing all that stress and tension away. As it clears your energy field, just notice how much happier you look. Notice the smile on your face. 
see how the weights that you've been carrying are no longer a burden. And notice how your energy field is expanding out as you are radiating love. Feel this love radiating from you, from your heart space. This waterfall of light is always available to you whenever you need it. All you need to do is close your eyes, imagine your ideal place of relaxation and immerse yourself in this healing white light. Now take a deep breath, relax, go deeper and repeat these beneficial statements to yourself mentally. Repeat mentally after me. Every day, in every way, I am getting better, better and better. Positive thoughts, suggestions and images bring me benefits and advantages I desire. I will always maintain a perfectly healthy body, mind and immune system. The following statements are for your better health. Keep in mind that from now on, I will occasionally be speaking in your place. Every second, every minute, every hour, every day, every cell, tissue, organ and system of my body is revitalized, restored and renewed resulting in a perfectly healthy body, mind and immune system. I'm able to function in harmony, physically, mentally, emotionally and spiritually to promote maximum benefits. My awareness in using my mind allows me to do activities that promote increased health physically, mentally, emotionally and spiritually. Now imagine the white light turns to green. You are now immersed in a glowing green light. This green light is unconditional love. It surrounds you, it encompasses you, it flows through your entire being, it fills you with love. All those hurts you felt, all the pain you felt, the angry moments, the frustrations, allow this green light, this unconditional love to heal all those spaces now. You are an amazing human being. You deserve love. You deserve joy. You deserve abundance and you deserve peace. It is now time to step out of your waterfall, step out of the waterfall of light. Your energy field is now clean and clear. You are centered, you feel a sense of clarity, you find it easy to focus, you feel as if you're in the flow, 
the flow of universal love and energy. Just take a moment to bask in this feeling of connectedness. You have now reset your body and mind for the month ahead. It is now time to set your intention for the month of August. I'm going to count backwards from 10 to 1. When you've reached the count of 1, you will have tuned into your own inner wisdom, your higher self, your intuition, that part of you that when you tuned in, guides you and intuitively knows what is best for you. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. You are now tuned in to your inner wisdom, your higher self, the part of you that when you tuned in, guides you and intuitively knows what is best for you. Feel the alignment with your higher self. Now ask yourself the following questions and just write down your first impressions. Don't analyze anything, just write down the first thing that comes to mind. What do I need to focus on for the month of August? Whatever comes to mind, write it down, then take a deep breath, close your eyes and re-enter the meditation. What do I need to focus on for the month of August? Next question, what steps do I need to take to take me closer to what I want to be, do or have? Take a breath, close your eyes, re-enter the meditation. The next question, what do I need to let go of? Whatever comes to mind, write it down and then close your eyes and re-enter the meditation. What do I need to let go of? And the next question is, 
is there anything else is there anything else I need to know or anything else I need to do is there anything else And then just allow a deep breath and as you exhale, relax. Bring your attention back to your body. Gently wiggle your fingers and toes. I'm going to count from one to three. At the count of three, you'll open your eyes, be wide awake, feeling fine and in perfect health, feeling better than before. One, two, three. Eyes open, wide awake, feeling fine and in perfect health. Feeling better than before. Thank you very much, everybody. You're all on mute, by the way. If you want to speak, please feel free to unmute yourselves. Did anybody get some valuable answers? Yes. Good. Yes. Whatever answers you got, just trust them. They do come from a nice place of wisdom. When you're in the alpha level, your intuition does answer your question. So they are definitely correct, if I can say it that way. Jose Silva used to always say, when you make decisions with our left brain, we often get them wrong. But if you make decisions with our right brain, you always get them right. <laughs> That's where your intuition lies. All right, lovely people. Thank you very, very much. If anyone has any questions, feel free to ask me. Otherwise, you may... Um, Log yourselves off. Have a wonderful month ahead. God bless. See you next Monday, Meaningful Monday. And if you enjoyed this session or any others, they're all recorded and on my YouTube channel called Silver Method Australia. Um, and feel free to share them if they add value. Okay, so thank you so much for your time and attendance. I appreciate it. Yes. I'm going to have to hang and ask you a question. But okay. I that that's okay. Bye, everyone else. Thanks, Janine. See everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thanks so much, everyone. Thank you to all the thank yous. Thank you, Michelle, Nancy. Thank you, thank Christine. You, thank you, Nancy. Thanks for chatting to everyone. You're welcome. Good night. Thank you. Good night. <laughs> thank you, Shail. Thank you, Sawana, Laura, George, Nancy again, Kalashri. The topic was new. So curious to understand. Enjoy it. Thank you. Thank you, Halashri. Uh, Denise, thank you. Good night. Did you want to talk to me alone, Claire? Yep, if that's okay. Then I just need to get the other people off. <laughs> yeah. um, anyone else want to ask anything? Otherwise, I'll remove you from the, the meeting. Um, no? Okay. Good night, everyone. Okay, let me just remove. Mm, and to stop the recording.